Hey guys, Gizmo here from Below Average Gamers. I love Christmas. Who doesn't love Christmas? Except maybe people who don't celebrate Christmas. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Point is, here in America, Christmas is a big deal. Everybody loves Christmas. One of the best parts about growing up in the time frame I did was, of course, Nintendo being out, seeing all of the wonderful, wonderful advancements in video games as I continued to get older into teenage years, into now my adult years and my later adult years, would you call it? I'm still kind of young. Just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm still young. But anyway, anyway, the whole point of this video is I wanted to share a few of my favorite moments and a few of my not so quite favorite moments of Christmas. And a lot of them revolve around video games. So let's start out and uh, I want to tell you my worst Christmas. And I'm going to sound like such, such a little spoiled, spoiled brat when I tell you this story. And the only reason it's the worst one is because I never had a bad Christmas. Never. I never really had one. My mom, she always made sure that whatever we had, whether, you know, we had a lot of money at the time, whether she was working two or three jobs, when she was raising me as a single mom, whatever, she always made sure Christmas was special. And she always got me something really cool. There was one year in particular, though, where she fell just a little bit short and if it wasn't for the circumstances that it was it would have still been wonderful and it would have been exactly what I wanted anyway and this is early 2000s I'm now a teenager and during my early teenage years I was a huge movie buff we had a video rental store right down the street everybody had one back then it was before Redbox, you young guys. Used to, instead of going to Walmart and, you know, boop, 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 here's my movie. Before that, there was actually stores where you went in and you rented things. And there were big displays of all the movies and you'd pick them up and you'd flip them over and you'd look at the back of them. But another story, another story. Anyway, uh, DVDs were a new media then they'd been out a few years but dvd players were expensive they were bad bad expensive because they were brand new well at the time there just happened to be a wonderful little console that had just come out and one of its key features was a dvd player you got 30 seconds to figure out what it is before i tell you i can't count that fast okay it was a ps2 PS2 had just come out. I loved the PlayStation. Uh, if Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8, 9. I mean, it was just... Square was on top of their game during the PS era. There were so many other games. You know, Capcom was putting out killer, killer games like Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3. It just... It was a wonderful experience. PS2's coming out. It's a DVD player, too. I'm really wanting to get into DVDs because of commentary tracks. I love listening to how things are made and people's opinions about things. New gaming device and DVD player. One package. $150. That's awesome. $150. The average DVD player back then was around $150 to $250. You could get a PS... PS2, $150, play all the brand new games, and have a DVD player. It's awesome. I hinted all year long, I wanted a PS2. I need a PS2. Final Fantasy X's coming out. Uh, ATV, Off-Road, whatever, whatever, had just come out. It was one of the packing games at the time. It's a wonderful game. It's got a killer soundtrack, by the way. I, I wish I could remember the the name of it because it, you know it had bands like Dead Z in the soundtrack it was awesome but anyway Christmas time Christmas morning comes up the whole family's around I see that box and I go that's gotta be a PS2 
that's a PS2. So, like always, you open up the little gifts first. Open up the first thing. Boom. Fight Club on DVD. Special Edition. Ooh! DVD. Yes! Yes! DVD! Alright, open up another one. It's another DVD. Keep in mind, I don't have a DVD player yet. So, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. There's something in that big box down there that's going to play DVDs. The PlayStation 2 is cheaper than most DVD players. I've hinted it. I've said it. I said it point blank. Yes. DVD. DVD. PS2. DVD. PS2. Yes. Open it up. No, it's a G DVD player. It was nice. Don't, don't get me wrong. It was nice. It played VCDs, which was awesome at the time because, you know, piracy and bootlegs and things of that nature were possible on that. I'm not saying I ever did that. I'm just saying it was one of those things that was possible. And you could also take all your home movies off of VHS, put them on to a VCD, add menus. It was very nice. It's awesome. I also had two mic inputs so you could use it as a karaoke machine, which was a little weird. But it was a nice DVD player. It wasn't a PS2. It actually cost $20 more than a PS2. Yep. And like I said, I sound like a spoiled brat right now. Oh no. I got a DVD player instead of a PS2 for Christmas. Whoa, woe is me. But like I said, I never had a bad Christmas. That I had to dig deep to figure out what a bad Christmas was. That was the worst I had. What can I say? I'm lucky. Now, on that same note, let's talk about the best one. And I was very, very young. This was 1991. Now, back then, like I said, Nintendo era. We had an Atari 2600, we had a Nintendo, and we also had a Sega Genesis. But I loved the Nintendo. I loved it. So I was guaranteed having a December birthday, I was going to get two games. One for my birthday, one for Christmas. I have no idea what my birthday present was. None. But I do know my grandmother got me this right here. This is my copy from back then. It, I love this game. And more particularly, I love this copy of this game because my grandmother gave it to me. And it was such a young age when I got it. I, I had a hard time, you know, really figuring it out. It took me a long time to figure out how to play an RPG. Because the closest thing I'd ever played before was Zelda. And this ain't no Zelda. I still remember first time I ever went to uh, Garland's castle to fight Garland. At the very beginning of the game, I bought weapons. I didn't know I had to equip them. So I'm sitting there hitting the item box, hitting the weapon, it says miss, ineffective, and I'm getting killed and I have no idea why. Yeah, I, I was a big little bitty kid. Little bitty kid. But, like I said, one of my favorite games of all time. It's got a huge sentimental meaning behind it and you just, you can't go wrong. This was it. Now fast forward 20 years. And uh, my grandmother had passed away. And I was a little sentimental around the holidays. Everybody's always a little sentimental around the holidays. That first holiday that a loved one passes away. And it's Christmas morning. It's me and my wife. And we're opening up stuff. And we had a very, very good Christmas. We really did. And she surprised me with something. 20 years later... She surprised me with a complete inbox. And it's got both map, well it's got the handbook, the map, the dungeon map, the monster chart. I mean, it, it's complete, it's mint, and it's wonderful. And uh, this one right here, it's another one. It's, it's, it's very sentimental to me because not only the timing, but the thought that she put into it. And she didn't buy it. CIB. She had to put this thing together piece by piece. She found a decent game, came with a dust sleeve, 
Then she found the box, the insert, the plastic. Then she had to buy an instruction manual. Then she had to buy the dungeon map. I mean, she had to put it together piece by piece. She put a lot of time and a lot of thought into that and it meant the world to me. We did a lot of gifts that year because I'd had a very, very good year at work and we had a fair amount of money to play with. And I really, I can't remember much else from that year other than this right here. Because it, it just, it meant the world to me. And it's, it's crazy, you know, some people, they go, it's just a game. It's just a game. But no, it's, it's not, and it, it's not just a game. It's a memory. And it's worth more than anything. And with that, guys, I want to hear some of your good stories. You can tell me your terrible ones, too, because most people have some pretty funny, terrible Christmas stories about bad gifts. Uh, grandmas and distant relatives are notorious for giving terrible gifts. I got lucky with mine. I can't help it. Don't, don't hate me. Don't hate me. I'm sorry. I would like to hear some of your stories, but more importantly, I would like to hear some of your good stories. What's your favorite? What was that one moment that just went BAM? This is what Christmas is all about. Because it's not about a thousand Christmas presents under the tree. It's not about the Macy's Day Parade. Which I think that's New Year's anyway. I, I don't know. It, it's not about none of that other stuff. It's about family. And it's about those special little moments. And sometimes the special little moments are just represented in a physical form. But this is Gizmo, this is Christmas, and I love you guys. Gizmo out.